Some years ago, there was a popular television program called Surprise, Surprise. It was hosted by Scylla Black and then later by Holly Willoughby. And one of its best bits was the unexpected reunion of long lost family members or friends. It would usually be set up in quite an unexpected way. Perhaps Scylla would come down into the audience at the programme uh, talking about having relatives living far away in Australia or Canada and then turn to people and say, do you have a relative in Australia? And uh, as they would say yes, she would say to them, when was the last time you saw them? And they would say many years ago and she would ask, why is that? And it might be because of health problems or financial problems or having lost contact. And then Scylla would tell them to look over their shoulder. And as they looked over their shoulder, uh, they would see that their relatives had been flown in from that other part of the world, that long lost uh, family member or close friend. And uh, the reunion and the emotions of the reunion would be filmed and people would enjoy seeing the, the joy and the, uh, the, the fellowship, the friendship, the relationship being restored in that way. There is nothing nicer than seeing relationships restored. In Acts chapter 12, we see the surprise that believers had when God miraculously rescues Peter from prison. It's a reminder that we have a God who often surprises us. The church had prayed passionately for Peter's safety, but was still taken unawares when he turned up at their meeting that night. May God amaze us with his answers to our prayers. May God take us by surprise, by the power of his Holy Spirit at work, as we are praying for our family members, or our friends, or our neighbours. Let's pray that God will especially be miraculously at work restoring relationships, whether it is a backslidden family member or friend, or somebody else that we know who has not yet come to know Jesus as their Saviour and Lord. There is a, a lovely prayer in the New Testament. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, chapter 3 and verse 20, prays for the Ephesian church in this way. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is worked within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Don't you like that bit that says God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine? And that's what we see happening in Acts chapter 12. God is doing more than the church asked or imagined. They've been praying for Peter's release and God had miraculously intervened, and there he was knocking at the door of their meeting. As we look deeper into this story, I want us to note this theme of surprise. First of all, notice the servant girl Rhoda is surprised in verses 12 to 14. The Bible tells us when Peter came to his senses that he was now out of the prison, miraculously uh, released. He went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. It was the upper room in Jerusalem that the church used for its meetings, the, the place where Jesus had had communion with his 12 apostles and where uh, the disciples had gathered 120 to pray for the falling and pouring out of the Holy Spirit upon them. It was a special place. It was their church meeting place. And Peter comes and he knocks on the door and a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer the door, says the Bible. And when she recognised Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed she ran back without opening the door and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. Uh, she recognised his voice, uh, but she didn't answer the door and open the door because she was taken by surprise. I wonder if Rhoda was a Christian yet. 
Maybe that's why it was her job to open the door. She's described you as a servant. Perhaps she was a worker who helped host the gatherings in the upper room. She knew Peter's voice, but in excitement and surprise, she wasn't expecting an answer to prayer. So she leads Peter outside the door and rushes back in. Testimonies and experiences of answered prayer are a great witness to the not yet believer and also to the backsliding believer. If God has done something amazing for you, tell people, tell us, make a record, make a little video that we can show on our Sunday morning services. If God has done something amazing for you, tell people about it. There's a roader somewhere that God is going to surprise. Maybe someone we know will be like Rhoda, a friend or family member, someone who will see God doing more than they ever imagined that he could do. Keep praying. Prayer is powerful. Passionate prayer reaches into the heart of God and sees that release of the Holy Spirit that we need in our lives, in our families, in our church. So first, the servant girl Rhoda was surprised. And then secondly, those present in church that night were also surprised in verses 15 and 16. Poor Peter is left outside because a praying church is surprised by answered prayer. This was the upper room. This was the meeting place of the early church. This was the place where God had answered prayers powerfully in the past. And yet the church was not really expecting God to answer their prayers. They were taken by surprise. They tell Rhoda, you're out of your mind. Uh, and Peter has to keep knocking the door until somebody goes and opens. And the Bible says in verse 16, when they opened the door and saw Peter, they were astonished. Are we expectant? Do we believe that God can do amazing things when we gather in passionate prayer? Are we open to the unusual or unexpected or have we settled for less than seeing God's power at work? Are we listening and looking for God to answer our prayers and for what the Holy Spirit may be seeking to say or do in our gatherings. Let's stay open to the unusual and the unexpected. We have a God who can take us by surprise. Has he taken you by surprise recently? So those present in church were taken by surprise. But also thirdly, those absent from the church that night were taken by surprise. In verse 17, it says that Peter motioned with his hand for the people to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. And then the Bible says, he says, tell James and the brothers about this. And then he left for another place. Tell James and the brothers. They had to be told because they weren't there to see it for themselves. They probably had good reason for not being there. James, the brother of Jesus, and the other leaders were targets of King Herod's uh, persecution. So they had to be careful where they went and when they went there. And perhaps someone listening to this service today would love to be in the fellowship of believers and in church on a Sunday, but know right now that that's not God's will. They need to shield themselves protect themselves from this coronavirus and this season of life. When they will, when they can, they will be in church. And until then, God bless you where you are. These services are for you. We want to tell you what God is doing, how his spirit is moving, how our church is being blessed, how our prayers are being answered, how the Holy Spirit is at work. I wonder, though, if there were others in Acts chapter 12 who could and should have been in the meeting of the church that night, 
who should have been there with the others praying but chose not to be and missed that amazing moment when Peter walked in and told his story. We need to realise that we will miss out in life if we are not where God wants us to be, doing what God wants us to do. That we can miss out on his blessing just by neglect or by apathy. So we need to be people who uh, recognise the importance of gathering. The, the church is not uh, something that is man-made, an organisation made up by clever people. It is the family of God brought together by Jesus Christ. It is his church. We ought to value it and be with other believers for fellowship whenever we can be, whenever we should be. There is then a sting at the end of this story in verses 18 and 19 where the Bible tells us that the guards who had been responsible for Peter are executed. It sounds harsh in our modern way of thinking, but this was the ancient laws, that if a prisoner escaped, the guards received the prisoner's punishment in his place. It is a reminder, perhaps, of the reality of our sinful world. A reminder to pray for those Christians who are still in prison, as Peter was. A reminder of the harsh realities of life. And maybe also a reminder that Jesus Christ was one who willingly took the punishment for our sin so that we could go free. You see, life's surprises can be good or bad. They can be nasty as well as nice. It's important to remember that God doesn't always answer our prayers the way that we want him to. But through faith we know that when we pray, Jesus will answer our prayers in the way that is best, even if it's not what we wanted. That in the end, all things will work together for good for those that know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. So keep the faith, keep trusting in God, pray passionately about the things that are on your heart and on your mind and be ready to be surprised. Lorraine, her story is in the latest CAP uh, news briefing. Her, her life changed rapidly and drastically in just 30 seconds. Her world blew apart when her husband of 20 years left her for another younger woman. Lorraine couldn't cope. She had a breakdown and spent time in hospital. She had many problems, couldn't pay her rent to council tax or a car insurance. She was leaving mail uh, at the door, afraid to pick it up and look at it. And contacted Christians Against Poverty because she desperately needed help. John, a Christian from a local church, became a debt counsellor. He came to the home and reassured her that there were people who would help, picked up the pile of letters, took them away and began to sort them out. It was a release. Instead of worrying about her money, Lorraine could focus on her mental and physical health. She could begin to, to sleep and to rest and relax and rejoice that day when the phone call came that she was now debt free. John, her counsellor, invited her to come along to a church event. And Lorraine says that she went just to get out of the house. But there she found people who would love her and care for her, help her and support her. So she went along to one of the Sunday services at the church. And suddenly she realised that she needed God. She says, God was always there. I just hadn't had my heart and eyes open to see him. Suddenly it hit me. I don't need all the answers. I knew from that point on I'd never go back to where I was before. And she placed her faith and trust in Jesus Christ as her saviour and Lord. Since then, God has been helping her. She's making new friends. She's well enough to look for work. She is rebuilding her life and she's got Jesus. Praise God 
for the difference that he can make. But perhaps her story is just another reminder that life can change rapidly. Life is full of surprises, for better or for worse. With Jesus, even the worst can be turned to the best. He is a God of surprises. Has he surprised you recently? What has he been doing in your life? What can you thank him for? Have you seen an amazing answer to prayer? Or a testimony that you have to share? Then like Peter, tell other people. As Peter told his story, Rhoda, those present in church, those absent in church, began to hear again of the might and the power and the love and the care and the compassion of God. And it's a life-changing message. God bless you.